is SC Ventures all about and what's your role in it? It's a very interesting question and, and very close to my heart. So uh, the venture started as an idea coming out from Standard Chartered Bank. So Standard Chartered Bank, 63 countries, 83,000 employees, right? Um, we, we, we're a big bank, right? So um, actually starting something new becomes harder and harder with, the, with such size. So came the idea uh, of establishing SC Ventures, which are entities aiming uh, that that do not it's not owned by the bank they are independent but they are aiming to two things number one try to uh, improve or um, let's say reinvent banking processes uh, on their own second thing is to actually try and uh, execute different business model than the classical uh, banking so we establish these uh, uh, subsidiaries or sub venture companies where we should we were able to uh, um, let's say invest in new ideas around uh, how the banking works so that's this is SC Ventures my role in SC Ventures is uh, basically I'm, I'm responsible for the third-party security uh, risk uh, of the venture so any venture as any startup would deal with uh, with many uh, uh, vendors and then there is a need uh, either by regulation or by business model uh, to monitor the security or the cyber security aspects uh, and exposure of, of, uh, of these vendors typically the third party security risk of, 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 of uh, ventures and the banks is is one of the big worries of the regulators right it's one of the big focus area uh, focus areas for any CISO or, or cyber security professional how do you decide which SMEs to invest in all right. I think I think SMEs is is, uh, is a bit outdated uh, statement, right? Uh, so now the world is talking fintechs, talking startups, right? So uh, small, medium enterprises um, as a category, right, is uh, now fa being phased out. But as a startup, right, the 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 investment in, in them is basically investment in the future, right? And it's being very very much driven globally at the moment, right? And uh, and, and and also in the UAE, as I believe, right? So. Uh, the the, the, the investors would typically uh, evaluate an idea, right? A, we call it a pitch that is presented by the idea owner, and then they would say, "All right, we're good to go. We're we're good to give you some money to execute this idea." Some, something I think around like the uh, the shows that we we see on the TV, right? But in reality, what Standard Chartered does is that we invest directly in ideas that we think uh, are successful but we also gather investors in order to invest ideas so it's it's a mutual benefit for, for the bank itself to invest in successful ideas and also for uh, our investors to in, in invest in them. the the value of this is is basically driven from the let's say from the idea being disruptive and being able to generate new income new businesses uh, and get new customers how does SC Ventures aim to rewire DNA in banking? I'm, I'm convinced that SC Ventures has already rewired uh, uh, banking in, in a great bit because it has been a long way. I mean, we're uh, we're headed by our by the CEO of, of the ventures, and uh, and he had a vision that uh, we we want to to build uh, um, independent companies that are able to execute banking in a very, very different way. Things that will match the metaverse, things that will match Web3, things that can offer the customers a competitive advantage, the young customers in specific, right? Things that are easy and that are not classical banking, right? So uh, SE Ventures, they, they aim to rewire this by launching the simplicity for, uh, for customers and by deploying non-traditional business models, right? Then we, we already Already know and deal with. Do you see a time frame where you say, okay, SC Ventures has completely rewired the DNA in banking, say five years from now? I'll just give you the, the, the vision, right? The vision is, is basically about integration, right? So uh, this means that uh, the, 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 these ventures now are operating as startup. They are just starting their business. They have good ideas. They have simple ideas like opening, an, opening a bank, for example, in 30 seconds and, 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 and similar uh, ideas. However, the, the growth of this is, number one, the ventures will start relying on each other, which means the startups will start start to seek help and partnership with each other. The, the ventures will start to seek partnership with the global banks because the global banks actually have the infrastructure that can serve many, many 
uh, customers. The ventures will start integrating actually the, the virtual reality like metaverse, right? And then connect it to the day-to-day uh, -day, uh, use of, of money and, and, and banking by the, uh, by the usual customer, right? Al along that line, it's, it's gonna be a learning curve. And I can tell you for, sh for sure, we are learning, uh, the customers are learning this new, about these new ideas, the regulator are, are learning about this uh, new idea. But end of the day, we will be able to seamlessly use banking in our day-to-day -day life. It, it doesn't have to be that uh, big branch that you walk into and it's not gonna have to be that appointment on your calendar that you have to do stuff. It's gonna happen easily and smoothly as you go. And this is probably the, the, the future. I don't think that's very far, to be honest. What are the latest cybersecurity regulatory trends and how do you think they'll change the future? All right, that's a, that's a good question. So, look, let me let me answer this question from a different point of view. R regulators, uh, uh, I mean, over the uh, over the years, right, have also matured and grown. And I'm talking globally, not not in the specific. So, we moved from the how to do things type of regulation, like I want you to do one, two, three, four, five, six, right, to now to a regulatory environment where we're saying, all right, we want you to avoid this risk, right? Then you start thinking about it. And this is a, this is what we call a principle-based regulation. Now, this is very, very important. Why? Because this line of thinking enables innovation, enable things like the ventures and enable things like new ideas to flourish, right? Because basically, there are no specific mandates. There are, of course, different maturity levels across the uh, across the globe, but this is what we're what we're seeing happening. The the attention of the regulators and in terms of cybersecurity, which is with my profession, is to towards emerging technology. So when we talk about blockchain, when we talk about Web3, when we talk about the metaverse, right? When we talk about crypto, all these are very interesting and, 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 and new technologies and new domains that actually nobody knows uh, what to do with it. Accordingly, you are seeing, an, 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 um, let's say, a growth, for example, for the Monetary Authority of Singapore, Abu Dhabi uh, uh, government as well. They are establishing what we call sandboxes or proof of concept right whereby new ideas can be actually tried and in these new ideas not only the the companies or the banks or the financial institutions are trying this new idea it's also the regulators learning about the behavior of these ideas and accordingly coming up with better regulations that can cope up with this technological uh, change right so we're seeing also uh, or, or I'm seeing also lots of, uh, of things being driven around resilience because uh, there is a reason for that I mean if you're gonna connect the world together and if you're gonna connect with partners and vendors and and, and, and you have lots of cybersecurity challenges then availability of the service to the customers becomes a concern because this is the stability of the economy itself then the resilience regulations now are prevailing more and more around how do we make sure that you as a financial institution or even as a startup are resilient right introducing the cloud into the the factors comes in also another part of, on the resilience so resilience and availability of the service across all this forest of integration is becoming very very important part of the uh, uh, regulation and i think uh, the, the latest i've read is that the um, um, Regulatory, the, the PRA, the regulator of the UK, is now uh, considering to expand their authority beyond the financial sector and go to other sectors that are partnering with the financial sector, which is a, a, a big step uh, in terms of uh, assuring resilience and stability of the uh, financial uh, sector. Resilience is a loaded word. What exactly does it mean? All right, okay, so uh, re resilience is, is not something that is well defined yet, so you, you are absolutely correct in, in not defining it, but resilience, uh, as prescribed from uh, key regulators, is the resilience of the business, right? So this is not a cybersecurity term. Cybersecurity plays one part in that by applying cyber resilience. And uh, from a re business resilience perspective, it's very simple. We, you need to ensure that your key services are available to everyone most of the time, right? This can happen through business continuity and just a recovery, which is very classic, but that's not the case because now we also have uh, cloud, right? And then we have few cloud players which will also take care of some of this resilience. But from a cybersecurity perspective, 
my own view is that resilience means the availability of cybersecurity controls and safety of the cybersecurity controls at any point in time while offering the service. Whether the service is, is, is up or being, uh, let's say, rerouted to a different location, it doesn't matter to the end user or the end consumer. What matters to them is that they are secure at all times. So cyber resilience, again, is being redefined, but, um, but it is a very important topic when we talk about uh, availability and this all these cross partnership that we talk about. What are the issues around identity theft? The issue around identity theft is uh, has has appeared in the cybersecurity landscape for a while now, and it has worried, um, let's say, many of our customers. Right? To according to research or or surveys from uh, from the U.S., uh, it has went down during the period of 2004 to 2007. But right now, identity theft is becoming more and more important because of the identity itself. When you think about web technology, when you think about Bitcoin, when you think about crypto, when you think about fintechs, it means that the identity or tracking the identity of a specific person is becoming very, very important. It's becoming very, very critical in things like the metaverse and Web3. If I don't, if I'm not sure 100% who I'm dealing with and he's the rightful or she is the rightful owner of that identity, it becomes a big problem. So it's actually a bigger uh, issue around also the governmental identity and how this integrates with banking and how this integrates with the services and then how can we guarantee that you are who you claim you are, right? Now, uh, how to avoid uh, uh, identity theft? There can be, let's say, personal mitigation, which means take care of your identity, don't post too much information uh, around yourself in, in, in social media, and try to take control of your information because hackers and cyber criminals actually do data gathering around specific person, and then they start uh, collecting this data and then they start building logic and and then they start using it to steal your credit card or something and and now we're seeing hackers also using AI which means that they can do this much more accurately and much uh, much faster so um, identity theft is going to be the biggest attention of cybersecurity uh, going forward otherwise we cannot execute all the integration across the fintechs and, and the new world of banking